Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial for the Strider plugin in Unreal Engine 4. In this tutorial, we're gonna have a look at the slope warp node and how we can use it to warp the character's stride up and down slopes. Now, just before we start, it's important to note that this is not a per foot uh, trace IK solution. While that solution is gonna get very accurate foot placement, this is designed more for slopes and more for an optimized method when you have a lot of characters and you want them to conform to a slope but you don't wanna have lots and lots of expensive traces. This node can use the capsule to detect the slope average and change your slope accordingly. So you might need a different solution if you want a fully per foot IK solution. Uh, that might come to Strider in the future, but no promises for now. So here we have the slope warp node and it takes in a slope normal and a slope point. Now the idea is that you're not gonna input these values here. You're gonna change the setting to automatic on, um, on the node so that it accesses the capsule information from your character. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I've exposed these inputs so we can play around with it. To have a better, bit of better visualization, I'm going to add a console command to turn on the debugging for the slope. So a.animno.warp.slope.debug and there's three levels. I'm gonna just put it to the max level so we can see everything. So we can see the slope plane here, it's flat and we can see the feet before and after and also the slope point, contact point. And um, the blue is the original and the green is the final. And if you have a look at this, you can see the, the original and final hips here as well. Okay, so let's change the slope. So I'm gonna add in a bit of slope here. I'm gonna actually move the floor down so that we can see this better. There we go. So you can see how our character has warped its movement down the slope and we can make it up slope as well. And we can also make transverse slopes. Of course, this va these values, the slope normal is gonna be detected at runtime, so you don't have to do this. The cool thing about the slope warping, warping node is that it works with all the other nodes. So if I change the stride scale, that works on the slope. The direction as well works properly with the slope too. So there is that. So now you have a look at what the slope warping node does. Let's have a look at how we can set it up. Okay, so here we have a somewhat blank animation graph. Let's set up our slope warping node. Now the slope warping node is gonna be need some IK. So I saved the IK setup that we did in the stride warp um, tutorial. And let's just plug that straight back in. We're gonna notice a bit of an issue straight away. The foot feet are locked to the ground and that's because the IK nodes in this particular animation aren't animated and we're not setting the IK nodes um, to the feet at any point. So that's why it's all getting locked in place here. Now you can either animate those uh, and export your animations with that or have something that actually sets these for you. Uh, one thing that does actually set these nodes by default is the stride warp node. So for the sake of uh, this tutorial, just to work around this, I'm gonna actually copy in the stride warp node into this graph and I'm not gonna actually set a stride scale. It's just so that we can have those nodes in the correct place and we'll plug that in. So that is now not an issue. Now let's get to the actual slope warping node. I'm gonna add in a slope warp node uh, type in slope and we can plug it in here. Now the slope warp node always goes at the very end of your graph, but just before your IK. Um, it doesn't need to be state specific. You can pretty much have one of these nodes for your entire graph. Now the idea is that we have this in automatic. We don't want to expose the, no the um, slope. We want this to be detected automatically, but I am going to expose these just so that we can um, play with these uh, for a, an example, uh, slope no uh, normal and slope point. Uh, so let's promote that to a variable. So the slope normal is basically the normal vector of the slope. And the slope point is a point on that slope. Now, when this comes to the automatic setup, these are being set by the capsule uh, collision with the ground. So the slope point is the point of contact and the slope normal is the normal of that contact. So that's pretty simple there. So we set up our graph more or less, but we need to uh, set up our bones. So if we go to bones, let's choose the IK root. So the IK foot root in this case, and we need to set up the hips where we choose the pelvis. I'm gonna leave these values as are. 
Uh, we also need to uh, set up the limbs because we need to know the length of the limbs to avoid hyperextension. So the tip for this is going to be foot L and the IK target is going to be foot IK foot L. And two, bo uh, two bone count because we've got a normal human leg here. Foot R and IK foot R. So there are our references set up and our debugging is showing, which means it's working. I'm going to just change the slope normal here. If you change the Y, that's going to, the Y and the X, it's going to change the slope. And I'm going to move this down, the floor height down, should already be down to negative 200, just so we can see the slope better. And let's get rid of the bones. Okay, so now we can see our slope and as we change this value, you see the feet are conforming flush and the hips are being adjusted so that our character's legs are never hyper extended. So let's have a look at the debugging. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna uh, put this in brush wire. We have two um, debug options here. So the blue is the original hips. This yellow is the first hip shift and the second green one is the second hip shift so that we don't hyper extend. And I'll explain how those work in a little bit. So we have this option here for downslope shift rate. And the reason why we want to shift the, the feet down the slope is to avoid this over compression of the uphill leg. Now, some compression is fine. Some is a bit too much. So we can shift the hips down the slope away from um, away from the slope so that that compression is less. Now we can tweak the amount and this is going to be more shift for a steeper slope than a, le a lesser slope. I like it around 10, 20. This just gives a little better looking animation. If I set this to like 100, you're going to see it's a bit over the top when I change the slope. Our character is getting pushed way far down the slope uh, and you could effectively do it negative, I believe. No, you can't because uh, that doesn't make any sense. But around 20, 0 to 20 is pretty good for that option there. Let's have a look at some other settings. We have a max slope angle, and I highly recommend using this because if your capsule touches a near vertical slope, it's going to try and warp to that. So we want to set a max. 45 is a good max, sometimes even 30. Uh, I don't think people realize sometimes how steep 45 degrees is. In real life, when you come up to a 45 degree slope and try and traverse this, you might feel like it's almost vertical. Um, so, you know, maybe 30 is probably good. And you'll notice that we can't really get uh, beyond our uh, specified slope. I haven't compiled and that's why that wasn't working. So you can see it's getting sort of clamped at 30 there. Okay, so let's have a look at height offset. Now, this is probably better shown with idles, and it's basically an offset of the height of your feet. If your feet are slightly hovering above or below the ground, uh, you're going to want to set a slight offset, sometimes one or two centimeters is necessary, but most of the time zero works pretty good there. We have smooth rate, and this is to smooth the slope change. So in this case, we have uh, negative one, which is an instant slope change, and you don't really want this. And you'll see why in the last tutorial I do where we actually make a character. It's because if we go on sudden slope changes, our hip adjustment is gonna be very snappy and the character's gonna be a bit jittery. So we're gonna want some smoothness. I'm gonna set this to, uh, it's actually very low values for slope because we're smoothing out a normal. So if you see how the slope actually changed progressively there instead of instantly. I'll make it like one so you can see it more obvious. Uh, so 0.5, it's, oh, I didn't compile, 0.5, there you go, you can see how it changes slowly. So you want some smoothing, not too much, otherwise your feet aren't going to conform fast enough, but enough so that uh, you're not getting sudden abrupt changes. The next is allow percent, uh, extension percent. This is very similar to the stride warping allow per, uh, extension percent. Generally, we don't want to allow the legs to ever extend beyond what the base animation pose is. But this allows us to do so up to, but not beyond a straight leg. And this can have a good effect sometimes, uh, particularly with slopes. However, if we do it too much like this and we actually get a straight leg, I don't think it looks too great. So we probably want to limit it at, you know, tops, maybe 0.5. 
You can play around with the number until you get the results you like, uh, but you're, it's always safe to go with the z um, zero. Whoops, I changed something else there. It's always safe to go with uh, zero extension percent uh, as a starting point. Okay, that is about it for the slope warping node. Uh, we do wanna look a little bit more at hip adjustment here because it's quite important for slope warping. Now, as opposed to stride warping where sometimes we don't wanna adjust the hips fully, we do need to do that for slope warping. Otherwise, we're gonna get leg hyperextension and it's not gonna look right. So we wanna keep the hip adjustment for slope warping at one, but we do wanna smooth the max recovery rate because we're pulling the, the hips down the slope and then towards uh, the back leg if it's hyperextended so that we don't get that hyperextension. But if we suddenly then go onto a flat surface after a 45 degree surface, the, the hips are gonna pop up suddenly and it's not gonna look very good. We want to smoothly allow the hips to recover. Remember, we can move the hips down instantly, but we want it to recover slowly. So this is an adjustment rate that we can do. We could say something like 100 uh, centimeters per second. Now, I'm not going to really be able to showcase this without a game, so, uh, but you might be able to get an idea here, if I set this to, so I'll set the smoothing to negative one on the actual slope so we can get a very abrupt change. So let's go from say that to the opposite, so 0 0.5 or rather that to zero. You can see the hips bop up suddenly. Uh, actually it's smoothed here because we set that uh, value to negative to 100. So if I set it to one, 0 0.5 uh, and set to zero, the hips uh, pop back up into place. Might be a bit subtle here, but in gameplay you will see it. So make sure you have some smoothing. If the value was too high, your hips are gonna slowly come up and that's not gonna look good. Play with it until you get the right value. So that is the slope warping node. Um, a lot of settings, but pretty simple overall. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial where we'll take a look at the bank warping node.